In today's episode, I'll introduce you to my new to me 1990 Compact 23. She's been here at the house on the hard for a little over a month now. I've got some projects that I need to tackle before I can splash her, but in the meantime, I'd like to give you a little tour, so let's head up on board. I'm here aboard my new to me 1990 Compact 23. Her name is No Moss with an exclamation point at the end of it. And that has been her name for her entire life. I did want to initially rename her Wildflower, but I think that we should just stick with what she knows as her name. Before we continue on with the indoor tour of Nomas, I thought I'd give you a walk around tour first of what she looks like on the outside. Here you can see that she will require some extensive sanding on the bottom. And after I get that done, I'll be applying a couple layers of Petite Hydro Coat Ablative Anti-Fouling Bottom Paint. It's not the way that you left me And what you didn't say So many things you could have told me Instead of walking away I find myself still wishing I'd feel your loving arms around me Holding me so close Wonder where you are Are you doing okay? Please tell me what I did Did I push you away? Now let's head up top and I can show you the decks aboard Nomas. One of the things that I first noticed about the boat is that there are hardly any fiberglass or spider cracks on board. It's pretty amazing considering that this boat was manufactured in 1990. I find that this is a true testament to the build and design quality that Compact Yachts offers. I love the teak that's on this boat. The combings are topped with teak, there's the teak grate in the cockpit sole. The companionway area has teak. And further on deck, you'll see that the grab rails and handrails are also made of teak. That means I'll have some work to do come next season before I launch. But I just love the salty look that teak gives a boat. This is the long-awaited indoor tour of the boat. I wasn't able to do this sooner for a variety of reasons, um, but more recently, because we've had a problem with mud daubers, and I just found the nests. I did some exploring, and there's one there. I found the other one. Here, it doesn't look like there's any activity in them right now, but the other day, the boat was swarming. Um, and so we tried to seal the boat up as best we could, um, even the through holes, to see if we could just uh, detour them from wanting to continue to nest in here. Um, so I gotta get rid of that. But in the meantime, um, you can see as you 
come down out of the cockpit, down into the companionway. There's a step here, which also doubles as a seat. And over here on starboard is a little settee. This, I believe, is for some sort of GPS uh, depth finder there. Um, this right here is a chart table that pulls out. The previous owner left this boat very well stocked. Here's some sliding um, storage areas here. Hopefully there's no more wasp or mud dauber nests in there. This boat has a propane stove um, and the propane is kept in the locker aft here. The galley, sit back a little bit so you can see with, um, put the cushion back up. Oh, here, there's storage here. I'm not sure how that works. Ooh, something just spell down there. And there's another nest. Holy moly. Gosh, those mud daubers, they love boats. Let me tell you what. This right here also lifts up. There's some electrical outlets here. You can see that the bulkheads are kind of cut out here. There's a fan. Um, there are a total of three port lights on each side. Um, I love this the overhead. It's a really nice material. It's not like that painted flaking that you can see. And I can't remember what they call it when the wood goes across like that. There is a name for that, but it's escaping me now. You can see on the, um, you know, I just realized I was uh, telling you all the wrong, we were looking at originally at the, the port side of the boat. The heat must be getting to me. <laughs> uh, so now we'll look at the starboard side um, and then we'll go up to the V-berth afterwards. Uh, so yeah, everything I just told you up until now, we were all looking at the port side of the boat, not the starboard as I had originally had said. You can see, um, put this up in the V-berth for now. The boom is here. There's cockpit cushions. I believe this is a solar, solar panel, I think. And back in the uh, starboard quarter berth, it doesn't go all the way back because there's lazarettes or, or uh, storage areas in the cockpit. I believe this might be a whisker or spinnaker pole. Not sure what this bar is here. Um, boat cushions, obviously again the boom here. Um, this is a radio. Uh, and again, more storage area with fiddles and behind here, another storage area in the starboard settee, all where all these cushions are piled on top of and a mainsail cover there, I believe. It looks like I've got my halyards and sheets there. A nice teak and holly sole, dirty, need to clean this up. But really the boat's really not that in bad of shape, I think. Um, cleanliness speaking. The head here moving up to the V-berth and some storage net, gear storage, um, another sail. This looks like it's a, it feels really soft so it must be some sort of like a, I don't know if this boat has a spinnaker or not but or maybe a drifter. Um, I think this is a chair for going up the mast, um, mast mate. I love the wood on the side of the, uh, on the ceilings here, as they're called, um, and it's fabric up above here. And actually it's exactly the same as what Sunny has, Sunflower, or Compact Legacy has. And it's in really great shape. I mean, there's a little bit of balling here and there, but it's hardly at all. It's really in great shape. The boat is almost 35 years old, so can't complain. This cushion here goes into the main settee or salon area for the starboard side um, settee. This looks like it's probably the mainsail here. And this is the cushion that'll fit into here to make it a full berth. Here, I believe, is where you put your road and chain, another gear hammock. And now I'm sitting in the V-berth looking aft. There is a, a curtain here to put that down. Um, the forward hatch looks like it has some cracking or crazing a little bit, not bad. I'll have to investigate the seals a little bit more, but I don't see any evidence of leaking. So that's always a good sign. Cabin lights, 
uh, I don't know. Yeah, carbon monoxide detector. Um, here's the screen for the forward hatch. I think that's pretty much it for the interior. As far as the diesel engine, hmm. Let's see if I can take a look see under here. This engine only has 377 hours on it. So, hmm, I was wrong. The engine is actually behind this area. So this is a little secret compartment area, I guess. Here's all my electrical. And another storage area here underneath. Um, a lot of zip ties, more electrical. So I have much to learn, much to learn. Really nice. I, I really love these compacts. They're so beautiful. That's the inside of the boat. Here are a few pictures that Nomas's prior owner shared of her under sail and while at birth. I hope you enjoyed this episode showcasing my new to me 1990 Compact 23. I look forward to sharing our adventures and journeys ahead with you. Until next time, fair winds. Oh, the sands of